Hello everyone, it is time for another Bevan's Brick City update. And the first thing we're going to get started with is this train shed. Everybody has been talking in the comments about how it's blocking my train station and they really don't feel that it's got a good location. So the first thing we're going to do is I took everything apart, scooted it down, and I'm going to plate in an additional 48 by 48 base plate. That way we have a lot more space, so the train station is no longer blocked in view. Quick note for anybody that's new to my channel, the method I use for ballasting train track is the pin lug method. And if you want to check that out and download free instructions, don't forget to check out the pin lug website. Anyway, let's get back to building. It took quite a bit of time, believe it or not, even though this is a quick elapsed video, but there's about four hours worth of work just ballasting and tiling everything in. But I'm really happy I did move it, so thank you guys for all the awesome suggestions, and keep them up. It looks so much better having everything scooted down, so again, thank you so much. But now what we have to do is we got to work on this little spot right here that's going to be some roadway. And the first thing we're going to do is I have to build four of these little track sections up, because we have a total of four different sections of train track that come across that area. And I build these a little bit differently. The reason being is because, number one, on the bottom side, I want to have some space to be able to run my wiring, what you're going to see, the reason why, very shortly. The second reason is because I like my track to be the same height as my sidewalks. If you were to take the train track and actually leave it down lower, what would end up happening is it would be even with your road, but you would have this goofy looking slope to come down to the track and then come back up with the sidewalk. And I think it's better to just to have a little bump in the road anywhere that the train tracks run, as opposed to having to have the sidewalks drop down. Now I'm building the railroad crossings. And the first thing I got to do is I got to light everything up. I got to run my wires in. And it's very important to note that when I'm putting the lights in, you can see right here, you want to make sure that you get the LED in the center of the little horn there, the bezel, if you will, the dish piece because I want the LED light to be nice and bright and visible. And I am going to be doing a wigwag circuit with this, simply using my multifunction board that I sell on my website, bevinsbricks.com. Most of this particular build I designed in a manner and fashion that I did not have to damage any type of Lego parts at all, except for the base. And the only reason I did the base was because I wanted to get a little more height out of the railroad crossing overpass piece. So I had to drill a hole through two two by two bricks and also my 4x4 plate, of which you'll see in just a second after I get this little ladder piece on the side all situated the way I like it, because you got to have access for the maintenance people that come out and work on it. Again, as you can see there, it was through a 4x4 plate and the two 2x2 bricks. Now, that hole that I drilled for the two lights on the railroad crossing itself also works for the railroad crossing lower piece. Mind you, it's not required to drill the hole. It's just the way that I prefer to do it because I don't like there to be any pinching or binding of my wires at all. And with a 1 8 drill bit, which is what I use, I can run up to six wires through that hole. Here, we're gonna start working on the pieces that go in between the tracks. And as you can see, I am just putting a two by two brick on the corner of each piece. And I'm doing that just like I did with the train tracks because I want to give my wires plenty of space so I can run them around and through and play some places. These are also going to serve as a place to locate my multifunction flash module so that way I can hide it to control the flashers for the railroad crossing. Now with everything built, it's back over to the table so we can start setting everything up. And what I did is on either end, I put a small four stud width piece of roadway in first. And then what I do is I pull the wires kind of taut and I do that so that way I can place the railroad crossing pieces over them and keep them in that little gap that I made. There is a four stud gap on both ends of those railroad track pieces. And once everything is installed, both the sidewalks and the roadway pieces, what I'm going to be doing is using the very center of this little module, we'll call it. This is two 32 by 32 base plates. And that is to keep everything as modular as possible. Quick note for those that aren't aware, when you're doing train track and you're using official leg Lego train track parts. To keep everything modular with Lego train track, you have to maintain four studs from the end of a base plate and eight studs in between each section of train track. So every two sections of train track that are parallel, you requires one 32 by 32 base plate. And in this situation, I'm doing four so we have two 32 by 32 base plates. Now with all the pre-built pieces that I did over at my build table, all I have to do now to finish up is I have to do a little bit of tiling. And once we're done with the tiling, I'm going to hook in the module 
and then we're going to give it a little test to see how well the lights blink. Everything worked really good, so I put the final piece in, and now we get to move on to tiling in the track that I originally ballasted. This is always one of my most enjoyable parts about doing my LEGO City, is the tile work. Although I must say, doing the little one-by-one -one tiles truly does suck, because my hands were trying to cramp while I was doing it, but watching it come together and seeing it get done it's always very cool because it's just an amazing finishing touch i'm not going to be putting any of the landscaping in just yet though because now i have a much bigger project that i want to tackle and it's going to involve me becoming godzilla because we're about to rip out this section of roadway because i want to replace it with this style of roadway that i came up with a while back this will make my city truly modular by allowing me to pick up and move and relocate cars at will. And the easiest way to do it is by using the new Lego road pieces that they sell. So what I did is I jumped up on the table and like I said, played Godzilla and I had to get rid of all this other junk wiring that I have in my table because I used to use some other brands wiring systems and quite honestly because I was tired of how sloppy these other brands are that I finally decided to create and sell my own and I want to get my own wiring system installed in every one of my buildings and in my entire display. How sloppy other companies wiring systems are is also why I invented this really cool magnetic wireless connector because this is what I'm going to be installing on all of my streets throughout my city. It will make everything so much neater and keep everything 100% modular including buildings because that plug can be used to take and plug and unplug buildings and also the roadway which is what I'm doing right here. I put that connector on the end of each roadway section so I can literally pick up that section of roadway there's no wires, there's no mess, and then I installed some of the building connectors on the top, and that's where the cars are actually going to go. So now my city is going to be 100% modular, both with Lego and with my wiring system, which means you can change anything, any way you want, any time you want in your entire Lego city. Just have to slide this last little quick piece into place, and this one was a little bit odd because there is a ramp that leads up into that alleyway there so i do have to snap that one little part together but now that we have everything together and in place it's time for some testing and i'm going to take just this random magnet i have right here to show you all we have to do when i get the other roadway done is simply take the magnet click it into it and then you can take your cars you can do anything you want it's completely modular so in this particular situation, I have my little nomad car that I'm going to put on the street. And let's put a police car behind him to pull him over. And if I don't like that, say, you know what, let's take the police car and let's say he's going on a high-speed chase to go chase somebody else. So let's take him and flip him over to the other side of the street. We can quickly and easily do that as well. And it all just lights right up because everything's already in the cars. It keeps everything wireless and completely modular. I still have a lot of wiring that I need to get out of my city, like these connectors right here. I'm going to be removing those, and I am also have to install them on the other buildings on the other side of the street. But you'll have to wait for the next city update to see all that. So as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Bricks, and we'll see you next time.